Think with me for a moment. His love is better than life. Christ, think what Christ brings. With Christ, there is forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. We know that, that we're all sinners and that we've all fallen short of a holy God, but because of Christ, because of Him, because of His shed blood on the cross, there is forgiveness of our sins. We know that, that one day with God is better because of the fact that He takes our sin and He moves them, shifts them as far as the east is from the west. We're better because of God. Because of Christ, our hearts are changed. This, this heart that's a, a heart of stone, because of Christ, can become a heart of flesh. I want to ask you a question. How, how many of you uh, love food? Any, any food lovers in the house? You don't love food? I, I, I love food. Maybe, it's, maybe I love food a little bit more right now than I have in the past, uh, just simply because I've been fasting for a while and, and food's a little bit more desirable. But uh, I, I love, I really do love food. And my favorite food, my favorite one, I believe out of all, and there's, there's a lot. Andrew would probably say, well, don't you like all foods, your favorite, right? Um, my favorite is a good old steak. Anybody like steak? Yes. You know, like some steak, I said all the hands. Uh, growing up, I, I, we used to um, eat steak a lot, and, and one of the things that I did growing up is I, I just followed kind of in the footsteps of my dad w with how to order my steak. And I just... You know, I just didn't know, you know, what do I do? And so whenever we ordered steak, it was always ordered and prepared, well done. I can see the disappointment on your face. And for years, anytime I would order steak, anytime I would eat steak, I would eat it well done until one day I met this beautiful lady by the name of Andrea, and uh, introduced to her and her family, and we would go out to dinner. And one day, we were out to dinner at a steakhouse, and the server came, uh, asked me what I wanted, and of course, I wanted steak. And when they asked me, okay, how do you want it prepared? I said, well done. To which I noticed extreme disappointment on the people at the table, especially the man that would one day be my father-in-law. And so I, I looked at him like, you don't like that? Like, well done? And, and you know, he's shaking his head. Like, no, don't do well done. And so I looked at the server and um, I asked, okay, so what do I do, medium well? And he just kept shaking his head. And uh, so I landed on medium Okay, medium. Now, I know some of you, some of you, you're like, no, no, you got to keep going, like medium rare or, or you know, rare. And, and that's just gross because I at least want my steak dead <laughs> when I eat it. But let me tell you something. When that steak, when the, the first time I tasted a steak that was prepared medium, it changed my life. Like at that moment, I knew there was a God. Like at that moment, and steak, it tasted like, you know, one that's medium, like, like done well done, it's, it's like a hockey puck, you know. Like it's hard, it, it, it tastes like cardboard, but a medium steak. And those of you that are vegetarians and you're getting grossed out, I'm so sorry, we're gonna have a time at the end of the service where we invite you forward, and we're gonna pray for you I love steak. And the moment I tasted that medium prepared steak was the moment I went, oh my goodness, this is so, so, so much better. I want you to say with me this phrase, choose what is better. Let's just all say it together. Choose what is better. That 
is the name of the series that we are starting today, a series that we've entitled, Choose What Is Better. And here's the thing, we all want better. Everybody want better? There's nothing wrong with better. Like we all, when we stepped into 2024, we wanted better. We wanted a better year. When, when we think about anything in life, our relationships, we want better. We want better dating relationships, better friendships. We, we want better, better marriages. I mean, everything. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. We want to eat better. We want better health. Many would say, I want a better job. I want better pay. Honestly, there's nothing really against or nothing wrong with wanting better. Unfortunately, we often find ourselves, though, being drawn to what the world says is good and better. When God has something immeasurably more. It's sad to me that most people are not choosing what is better. Today, we launched this series, and over the course of the series, what I hope that we all come to do in our life is for us to let go of what we think is good and choose what is better. Let go of what we think. How many of you know that oftentimes what we think will get us in trouble? It happens. And so we're going to learn to let go of what we think is good, and we're going to choose what is better. Now, before I move forward, I'm going to talk about next week, because next week is what? Next week is Super Bowl Sunday. Exactly. Super Bowl Sunday. Who's ready for Super Bowl Sunday? All right. Any Chiefs fans in the house? All right. There's three of you. Okay. What about San Francisco? Come on. All right. And how many of you just don't care at all? There you go. Yeah, I don't have a dog in the hunt either. But uh, let, me, let me invite you next Sunday, okay? Wear, because it's Super Bowl Sunday, wear your favorite jersey. All right, come on. Wear your favorite jersey. It doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't have to be a Kansas City Chiefs. It doesn't have to be a San Francisco jersey. It just cannot be a Carolina Panthers ver- jersey. No Panthers jersey are allowed in this house for at least a couple of years. All right, I'm a fan. I'm just not a fan right now. But next, next week is Super Bowl Sunday. And if you are a, like you're a sports fanatic, you're, you know, you're probably looking at this thing going, well, this is just a repeat of previous years. It's just a repeat. And I was thinking about that this week and thought that Super Bowl Sunday is a, is a great thought because next week is all about a repeat. Next week, we're, we're going to talk about what it means and what it looks like in life when we have our life set on repeat. Because there's a lot of people. It's like you're stuck there. You just keep reliving your, your, your sins from the past. Things that, that you've done long, long ago. You just keep re, reliving them. And you can't seem to step forward. And you need to understand that you will never move forward as long as you're looking back. And so next week... We are going to deal with this difficult idea about getting past our own past, which is a great time to invite your friends. Next week, it's an awesome time to invite your friends. Please invite your friends, bring them. They don't even have to wear a jersey. All right, they can just come, it doesn't matter. They can be a Panthers fan. Bring them, bring them to church next week because here's the thing, so many people, feel like failures. So many people feel like the psalmist in Psalm 38 that says, my guilt overwhelms me. It is a burden too heavy to bear. I wonder for you, how many of you can relate to that right there? Next week, 
Next week, we're diving in. We're going to figure out and see how can we get past our own past and choose what is better. This week, we're going to be in Psalm. Okay, the book of Psalm, if you've got it, it's in your Old Testament, Psalm 84. If you haven't already, open up your app, uh, scan the QR codes on the screen behind me or right underneath me. That will take you to the message notes. And I hope what you'll do is you'll follow along with today's message. All the scripture is there. There's some fill in the blanks. And I'll give you those as in just a few moments. But let's read the passage of scripture that we're going to launch this series with. The psalmist writes in Psalm 84, starting with verse 1, this is what he says. He says, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul, listen to this now, my soul longs, yes, faints for the court of the Lord. The court of the Lord, when we see it here in the context of this scripture, it's like it's God's presence. My, my soul longs, yes, faints for the court of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Now, go on over to verse 10 and listen to this verse. This is like a key verse that I hope you will Apply to your life. I hope that you may even memorize it. Listen to what he says. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. It's a pretty powerful verse. In fact, it's so powerful, I think, that we need to just say it Declare it one time together. Okay, so out loud, here's the thing. I'll even allow you, this is an open book test. All right, so I'll even allow you to use your notes. Read the verse. Let's say it out loud together. Those of you that are watching on the other side of the screen, come on, join us together. We're going to say verse 10, and this is way it, the way it reads. For a day in your courts. Okay. you got to participate. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say it one more time. Are you ready? Can we just say it all out loud together? I can't hear you. This is what it says. Verse 10 says, For in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. That's a beautiful verse. If you're a church person, you read that verse and you go, that makes sense. I, I agree with that. However, the tragedy is that we do not believe that in 2024. We just don't. My prayer for you, through the reading of God's word and through the Holy Spirit, that we would all come to this place in life where we understand or we become convinced to choose what is better. And God is always, always better. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, no, I don't believe that. Scripture tells us that his love is better than life. Think with me for a moment. His love is better than life. Christ, think what Christ brings. With Christ, there is forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. We know that, that we're all sinners and that we've all fallen short of a holy God, but because of Christ, because of him, because of his shed blood on the cross, there is forgiveness of our sins. We know that, that one day with God is better because of the fact that he takes our sin and he moves them, shifts them as far as the east is from the west. We're better because of God. Because of Christ, our hearts are changed. This, this heart that's a, a heart of stone, because of Christ, can become a heart of flesh. He changes us. He he opens us up to see things that we would never otherwise see. He opens us up to love in ways that we would never love. With Christ, 
there's this unconditional love. Think about it. We do nothing to earn his love. Not a single thing. You, you can't earn his love. And if you can't earn his love, then there's nothing you can do to lose it. And yet, we wrestle with this. A day with God. A day with God is so much better. A day with God is so much better because when, when you're going through hard times, when, when you're in a time when, when you don't think you can make it, when the weight of the world is just crushing you down, you have his supernatural presence and peace on your life that no matter what you're going through, you're stronger. And listen, the world doesn't understand that. It doesn't make sense to them. A day with God is, is better because of his power. We, we have the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit, it, he lives inside of us. And so wherever you go, you always carry with you this, this power. A day with God is better. A day with God is better because of his provision because he's taking care of you, because he's, he provides for you. The, the Bible tells us that, that he, gives every, he gives what we need to, to live in godliness. Like We have everything we need. A day with God is better because you have purpose. You have a divine calling that can change the world. That's a day with God. So my prayer is that we choose what is better. And what I say is better is a day with him. Now, I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying. I'm not telling you that a day with God makes all the bad go away. I'm not telling you that a day with God means, means you're not going to have a bad day, that someone is not going to stab you in the back, that you're not going to lose a loved one. I'm not telling you that a day with God doesn't, you know, doesn't mean that you'll, you'll never have pain in your life because the truth is you will. You're going to go through storms. But here's the cool thing. A day with God means that when you are in that storm, when you're in the most difficult time of your life, you're not alone. When you're in the most difficult time of your life, you have the power and the presence of God Almighty. A day with God is better. And so if a day with God is better, then how do we have that? Do you ever ask yourself that? Like, how do we have a day with God? If uh, some of you, you may think, well, okay, a day with God. Hmm, okay, I guess what I'll do is I'll start out by reading my Bible. And that's a good step. All right, get up in the morning, you do a Bible plan, you pray. You, you might think even that a day with God is, I'll come to church once a week. I'll, I'll serve every, you know, every other week. I, you know, that's a day with God. And, and listen, all of those are great Decisions. All of those are great choices. But what I pray that you and I learn to do today is to maintain an ongoing, unending awareness of God's presence. Maintain it. How many, how many of you know that oftentimes we're just not aware of God? but he's there. We just got through looking at Haggai. And in the book of Haggai, we talked a lot about the temple. You remember Solomon's temple. He built this fantastic, beautiful, amazing temple. And that temple represented what? The, the presence of God. That was where the, the Jewish people, they would go there in order to be in God's presence to worship him. Well, we live in the New Testament times. God came to us. And because God came to us, we are now the temple of God. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, now you can have a day with him. 
The Apostle Paul would maybe say it somewhat like this in Colossians chapter 3. He would say this, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. And whatever you do, whatever you do, like everything is about Jesus. I, I had, um, had some friends once not too long ago where we were at their house and we, I remember exactly where I was standing uh, when in a, we were in a conversation and we were preparing food and the statement was made, not everything is about Jesus. Man, that got all over me. And I began to think about that and process that and think, thought, that's not right. No, everything is about Jesus. There, there's not a single thing that you do in life that's not about Jesus. Tomorrow morning when you drive to work, it's about Jesus. Tomorrow morning when you drive to school, it's about Jesus. That, that's why we don't, you know, we, we don't try to run people off the road and put them in a ditch. Okay? It's all about Jesus. The conversations that you have are about Jesus. When you open up your phone and you Snapchat with friends, that is about Jesus. It all has to do with Jesus. If you find yourself in working out tomorrow at Fitness Connection, that, listen, that's about Jesus. It, it's all about him. You know, if you, if you go to Walmart today after church, it's about Jesus. In truth, you know, I'm just speaking some truth. You're going to need Jesus when you go there. It's, Walmart's a scary place, right? But, but everything, everything you do is about Jesus. So if, if everything we do is about Jesus, and so in, in Paul said, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all for him, then how do we do that? How do we, how do we maintain this ongoing, unending awareness of God? I want to give you three Three thoughts, okay? Just three ideas, things that I hope what you will do today and you and I together will learn to do over time. Three things that will help us maintain an ongoing, unending awareness of God. And here's the first one. The first one is this. We're gonna learn to communicate constantly with God. Constantly. And that may scare some of you. You may think, well, hold on a minute. You want me to constantly pray? Like I, I, I do good just to make it five minutes. What am I gonna pray for constantly? And that's kind of the idea, but I'll explain it a little bit more. The Apostle Paul, he said it like this in 1 Thessalonians. He says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Just like there's this continual communication we're constantly communicating. I don't want you to think about morning prayer. I want, to think, I want you to think about maintaining prayer. That, that's what we're to do. But so oftentimes we compartmentalize this thing. We think, okay, well, I'll get up in the morning, I'll, I'll read some, some scripture, I'll pray, and then I go on with my day. That's not the idea here. The idea is to communicate constantly. And that may be overwhelming, but yet you do it all the time. You carry this little thing in your back pocket and you're constantly communicating with it. I'm in constant communication with the people that I love, with this right here. And here's what's crazy. We take it everywhere. We go to the, to the potty. And that's sick. But I do it too. Um, but we constantly communicate. I, I can send a text message out and communicate immediately. I, I've had communications, even this morning, e even today before I, I preach, I've had a communication with, with, with one guy named Grayson. He's who's, who's like, I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm not going to be at church today, but I'm praying for you. I, I've got Eric that sends me scripture and says, I'm praying for you. I, I've got a, a communication with a whole team of online hosts talking about who is online watching right now. We're, we're, we're in communication, and you do the same thing. You constantly communicate with this right here. I, I want you to think in terms of that right there. You can communicate with God 
without being on your hands and knees, with your eyes closed, your head bowed, and your, your hands in this position, you can communicate with God anytime. You can communicate with God driving. You can communicate with God as you're sitting in a classroom. You can pray. You don't have to, you don't have to close your eyes. You just talk to him. He hears you. He knows your thoughts. That's the kind of God. You can communicate with God when you're, when you're at the office and you're standing in front of somebody, someone and they're telling you their life story and you, you can pray for them. And you can communicate with God. The second thing that I want to encourage you to do and I hope we'll learn to do this is to obey God immediately. We're not going to just communicate constantly. No, we're going to obey God immediately. How many of you know that delayed obedience is disobedience? And so often what we do, I just believe this for Christians, is we delay. It's, it's, God speaks to us. God gives us this thing to do. He says, you know, gives us a, a command, and we kind of delay. Oh, I'll, I'll put it off for a moment. With the idea that we may do this one day, but we delay and we become disobedient. Paul said it like this in Galatians 5. He says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. How do we keep in step with the Spirit? We obey God immediately. If you're having time with God, if you are regularly reading God's Word, if you are constantly communicating with Him, let me tell you what's going to happen. God is going to speak to you. He's going to speak. And at that moment, what we want to do is learn to obey. It's life changing. Why? Because one day with God is better. One day. Finally, what I hope that we learn today is that we're going to desperately seek God daily. We're going to desperately seek him. We need him. The psalmist that we read today, you, you can see that desperation. A few years ago, I ran across this, this passage in Psalm 119 where uh, it was just amazing. It, it says this, uh, Verse 147, I rise before dawn and cry for help. The psalmist said, I hope in your word. Now, listen to that for just a moment. I rise before dawn and cry for help. It's like the psalmist is saying, I can't even sleep. Like, I want to beat the sun up. I, I want to get into your presence, God, because I need you. God, God, I'm crying for help. You're all I got. I, I, do you see the desperation there? Has there ever been a time when you've been that desperate? Where we need God? Like one day in God's presence. It's better. The psalmist knew it. He said this. Remember earlier in verse 2 in Psalm uh, 84? He says, my soul longs. Yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. He's talking about the presence of, of God. My soul, my heart, and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Has that ever happened to you? You need him. And I realize it can be a little bit weird. Like, really, to say, God, I need you. I, God, I need you. But it's, it's, it's something that we need to repeat over and over. We need to develop this, this desperation. We need to seek after him. God, I need you. And oftentimes what I find, the reason why we don't think that way, the reason why we may think it's a little bit weird is because we just, we haven't developed that, at, that, that appetite for that. Like it's not a, it's not a part of, of, of what we digest. We, we don't have a taste for God, I, um, my first big job out of high school 
was, I called it my big, first big job because before that, it was, I just worked at, worked at Bilo as a bag boy. And, uh, but anyway, I started working with Delta Airlines. And I noticed all the people there at Delta, they drank coffee. And I tried it. Like I tried coffee. I tried adding sugar and cream. And like it was nasty. It, really nasty. And for years, I would take a sip, throw it in a garbage can. Because that is nasty. I'm not having that junk. But you know what I noticed over time? Is that I began to develop a taste for coffee. So much so now that I don't need sugar. I don't need cream in it because I have an appetite for it. See, you develop a taste. You develop an appetite for what it is that you intake, what it is that you eat. I, I, I didn't used to eat sushi, but I love sushi now. Why? Because I developed a taste for it. <sighs> Here's the thing. When all we feed on are the things of this world, then all you're going to develop is a taste for the things of this world. And if all you do is you seek what the world offers, then all you're going to do is desire what the world gives. And I'm here to say to, to all of us today, a day with God is better. So much better. And when you seek God, when you start developing a desperation for Him, then when you read the psalmist, it will begin to make sense. When you read, like for example, in Psalm 63, when, when the psalmist wrote, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary and beholding your power and your glory. And in verse three, he says, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. One day with God is better. And here's the thing. If you can ever learn to do one day with God, you'll learn to do two. And if you can do two days with God, you can do a week. And then a month. And then a year. And then a lifetime. One day, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, a doorkeeper, the lowest position, the lowest place. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of wickedness. When we see him as better, we'll begin to let go of what the world says is good. And we'll begin to choose what God says is better. And that's my prayer for all of us, that we would choose what is better. Will you bow your heads? Close your eyes. No one looking around. This is a time for you. Wherever you are watching from, whether it's in per here in person or on the other side of a screen, listen, God wants to speak to you. And if you're looking around, if you're thinking about what your neighbor is, is, is doing or the people next to you is doing, then this is what it tells me. You're not doing business with him. So for just a few moments, tune everything out. And let me ask you this simple question. How many of you would say, just being honest, pastor, in my life right now, I'm not 
choosing what is better, but with God's help, I want that to change today. If that's you, wherever you are, would you raise your hand? Come on, just raise your hand. Be honest. Be honest. I think you can put your hand right back down. There are others of you, and, and like you're watching this, and you're trying to figure it all out. And I just want to take you back to one quick passage of Scripture that I said earlier. And the Scripture is simply this, that your, the psalmist said that your steadfast love is better than life. It's better than life. That is God. One day with God is better than life. One day with God changes everything. But I know some of you, you're, you're listening to this and you're thinking, but that don't make sense to me. I, I can't believe that. Here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that God is always, always better. And I encourage you, I, I beg you, I, I want to, come on, you've got to receive him. Like one day with God. Right now, you're just living in your sin. If you don't have him, right now, everything that you do is leading you towards destruction. Everything that you do is leading you towards separation, towards death. But here's the good news today. You can spend a day with God. The good news today is that you can be forgiven of your sins. The good news today is that everything that you've done in the past can be wiped away. It can be moved as far as the east is from the west. You can be changed by simply saying yes to Him. And you might be here, you might be listening and thinking, you know what, I, I, I want that. Like I, I feel drawn to that. Let me tell you what's happening. God, the creator of everything, is working inside of your heart right now. He's trying to draw you to himself. And the way that he draws you to himself is through faith in Jesus. And so let me just say to you, friend, maybe you're here and today is your day. And you would say, I want Jesus. I want his forgiveness in my life. I need his grace and his mercy on me. I, I want him to change my heart like I've made a complete mess of my life. But today, today, I want to repent of my sins. I want to turn from my life of sin. I want to surrender my life to him because I want to live every day with him. If that's your prayer, if that's where your heart is, then just pray this with me right now. It's a conversation and just say, Jesus, go ahead, talk to him. We're, we're having a conversation with him. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that my sin, it separates me from God. But today, I want to turn from my life of sin to a life surrendered to you. And so, Jesus, I'm all yours. I'm asking you, come into my heart. I'm giving you my life. I'm yours now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now with heads bowed, eyes are closed. Here's the thing, if you prayed that prayer, your sins have been forgiven. Like you are new, your heart has been changed. You're living now every day with God. And I wanna ask you something, you gotta celebrate it. And so wherever you are, if that was your prayer, you have gotta tell somebody and I want you to tell me in just a moment, I'm gonna count to three. And the moment that I get to three, if you had that conversation with God, I want you to just raise your hand wherever you are, okay? To, and by you raising your hand, you're saying, I said yes to Him. I returned from my life of sin. I gave my life to Jesus. If you did that today, raise your hand now. One, two, three, just lift it up right now. I said yes to Jesus. Lift it up, hold it up. Come on, don't be ashamed of it. Come on, you're not alone. There are hands going up. Raise it up. I said yes to Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless you here, here. Come on, raise it up. God bless you. Thank you. I see you back there in the back. One, two, thank you so much. God bless you. Come on, be honest. I said yes to Jesus. Those of you that are watching on the other side of the screen, you can say yes as well. Our hosts are there. Put your, put your name in the chat room. You can, hey, you can even do this. And this is what I want you to do. Send me a text message. You're going to see it. There's a number that's going to come up below me send, that comes to me. All you have to do is say, I said yes. And this, 
afternoon, I will begin to answer you and communicate with you. Heavenly Father, I pray for all of us that we would know that one day, one day with you is better. One day. I pray that it would be part of our heart and our life, that one day in your courts would be better than a thousand elsewhere, that we would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of our God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Oh Lord, Lord, draw us to you. Help us to communicate constantly with you. Help us to be so in tune with you that we would obey immediately. Put it on our hearts to seek you desperately, Lord. And I pray we would all choose what is better. I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, amen. Anybody want to celebrate?